If there was one single event that changed Edison's life, it came when he was 15. Edison was spending his days at the Mount Clemens Railroad Station, managed by James McKenzie. He saw McKenzie's child in danger from what seems to have been a rolling boxcar. That's how the story is usually told. And he rescued him. The incident was later turned into a famous illustration and reenacted time and again for movies. Out of gratitude, James McKenzie taught Edison how to operate a telegraph. There are so many contingencies in a person's life that turn things around, that, that change events. I don't know if this was one that really changed his life, but I'd say it probably accelerated his, his progress into telegraphy. Edison soon found work at the telegraph office in Port Huron. Then, still a teenager, he became a roving telegraph operator, constantly searching for new opportunities to learn. His first stop was in Stratford Junction, Canada. Then it was on to Adrian, Michigan, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and a host of other cities throughout the Midwest. In the 1860s, that kind of wandering wasn't unusual. It was a very common profession for teenage boys of that era when the telegraph was becoming, was the number one technology in the whole country. There were lots of jobs and lots of opportunities. It was expanding like wildfire. During his travels, Edison took time to write home, I don't look much like a boy now. He continued to read everything he could find about chemistry and electricity and began experimenting with telegraph machines. The telegraph was cutting-edge technology, attracting the same breed now attracted to computers. Kids working in their teens and early 20s, that's how Edison and these, these telegraph inventors that he grew up and worked with, uh, that's what they were doing. They were hacking telegraphy instead of hacking computers. Thomas Edison was 21 when he moved east to Boston. He rented space in a machine shop and officially began his career as an inventor. Edison felt electricity could improve the political process. So his first patent was for an electric vote recorder. It was meant to speed up voting in the legislature, which was exactly what legislators didn't want. This first invention was a commercial failure, which made Edison even more determined. I think that is one of the real lessons that Edison could teach us today, is that failure is a good way to learn. <laughs> and to progress, and that failure by itself is not a bad thing. Next stop, Wall Street in New York City. The financial district was a thicket of telegraph wires running between brokerage houses and trading floors, all intended to move information at ever faster speeds. Already known as a mechanical whiz, Edison was commissioned to design new stock tickers that reported the price of gold and silver. He also developed a revolutionary new telegraph that could send four messages on the same wire. If we were talking about a sports metaphor here, Edison would be the Wayne Gretzky of the telegraph industry. Just as Gretzky completely changed the level of, of accomplishment in the NHL during his year, so, so Edison changed the level of individual accomplishment in the telegraph industry. Edison wrote to his parents, I am now what you Democrats call a bloated Eastern manufacturer. Most of what he manufactured was purchased by the huge telegraph company, Western Union. Western Union put Edison on a retainer, basically. They signed contracts with him. They said, anything you invent in this line, we'll buy. He was now working for the largest corporation in America. And the only national corporation in the 1870s was Western Union. And so he was right at the heart of, of corporate capital. There. Edison's machine shop was in Newark, New Jersey. In one legendary photo, all his workers pose on the street, while Edison is on the fourth floor, presumably too busy to come downstairs. That's the legend, but no one really knows if that is Edison poking his head out the window. It is known that one of his employees was a 16-year-old clerk named Mary Stillwell. After a three-month courtship, they were married. Mary Stillwell Edison, when he courted and wooed her, was a teenager. Uh, she took her sister along on the honeymoon. Uh, 
began producing babies as Edison's fame started to develop. But as his fame started to develop, the demands on his working and personal time also increased. Those demands were about to explode, along with Edison's fame, as one revolutionary invention followed another. In 1876, Americans threw a party in Philadelphia to celebrate the nation's 100th birthday. That same year, Thomas Edison turned 29 and was about to astound the world. He set up a new laboratory in the farmland of Menlo Park, New Jersey. At the time he moved to Menlo Park in 1876, he was well known uh, in the telegraph field and on Wall Street when he comes out of Menlo Park six years later. He's probably the single most famous man in the world. This was Edison's invention factory. He surrounded himself with brilliant machinists and electricians. Their goal? A major invention every six months. Edison had the gall to say he could help create a new world if he was able to create a place that would continually process change. 